Okay, um, the best way to get to the ProQuest site for the submission is to actually go to the Graduate School main website. And if you look at the front page, we have a button over here, Electronic Theses and Dissertations. If you simply click on that, that takes you through to all the information and instructions, which tells you what we're going to do um, when it comes time for you to actually do this exciting project. You'll come down here to the ProQuest submission and click on that, and that'll actually link you to the ProQuest website and our portal inside it. And you'll know you're in the right place because it'll have uh, the name of the system up here, ECD Administrator, and over on the top right-hand corner, you'll have the University of Alabama Graduate School, so you know you're in the right place. Um, you will have um, either submitted, uh, uh, set up a new account for yourself, or be asked to set up a new account. And obviously, remember, please remember to record your password somewhere so you don't forget. Um, we have a myriad of passwords to remember nowadays. This one is just as important. Uh, when it actually comes time to submit your dissertation, you'll find lots of useful information at the top here. Um, support and training is fairly self-explanatory. The resources and guidelines one will be the main thing that I think will help you. In particular, there is a very useful section on creating the PDFs, the main document we're going to be using, standardized document. And then right here is a very nice tutorial which will take you through the different uh, very easy steps for actually creating the document. You obviously will need uh, Adobe Acrobat to create the PDF. Um, as I understand it, most laboratories on UA campus have that uh, software. OK, so we're going to go back a screen and to the information and then back to the start. So we're ready to begin. So we're going to submit a thesis or dissertation. Uh, and then this is where you can have the option to create an account, which if I just click on that, just asks you for the most important thing, which is an email. An email address that you constantly check or that you please do have directed to the email address that you do check most frequently. Uh, because this will be used as the main way of communicating with you from ProQuest and from ourselves in case either of us has, has any questions about what has been submitted. Uh, standard information, name, um, country of citizenship, and then you'll be asked to set up a username and a password. And then once you do that, you will have created your account that you can sign into at any time. The beauty of that is you haven't got to submit and then fill in all the information all in one past you can actually uh, go in at different times uh, and if you find that you're missing a piece of information you can sign out it will save what it has done so far and then you can go back and continue uh, so I am just going to now sign on to my account which I had already set up and hopefully I can remember my password and let's log in and here we go this is one that I would started earlier so um, I'm actually going to um, continue with where I was. And let me show you the stages that I have already gone through. So here we are. We're going to um, submit an ETD. It's a new ETD. And as you see, it's very user-friendly. Down the left-hand side here of the screen, it shows you all the submission steps, one after the other, which are highlighted. Um, as you see, it's currently showing on the first one, which is instructions. These boxes will check off as you complete them one after the other. It's made for guys because it's, it's sequential. Uh, you can't move from one step to the next. You can't do two steps at the same time. You have to complete one before you can move on. But as I said earlier, once you've set up your account, you can come out of it at any time and it saves where you're at. So you can go back and carry on from there. As you can say, it's split into sort of three major sections. There's the first section, which is the mainly the publishing information, that's what gets you started. Uh, choosing which way you're going to go. Um, you do this in conjunction with your advisor and with the graduate school. Give us a call because we might be able to give you some advice and some information about that. Talks about the different publishing options, shows you the the legal document that you will be asked to sign and asks you for contact information once, once the thing is published in case a researcher or, or a re reader or reviewer needs to ask you any questions about the dissertation. The middle section obviously is the meaty bit. Uh, it's metadata about the dissertation or thesis that you're submitting. Then the actual upload and conv conversion and upload of the document itself. Any supplementary files. This is, this is fantastic. 
um, in the past if you wanted to add anything in at the end to your dissertation in terms of supplementary material like audio files, like some video, like data tables, masses of data tables. Um, the only real way you could do it was to stick it on a CD, record it onto a CD and we would physically tape it into the back of the book once it was bound. With ETD what you can do is you can actually take a whole wide range of different files and upload them as separate supplemental files. Um, this gives you an extra added dimension to the uh, dissertation or thesis you can submit um, and we'll come and look at that as we go through. This note section is, is if you need to write a note to me um, as part of the submission. Um, 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 at this stage I'm, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm not really sure what you would put in there, but that gives you a, a quick and easy, dirty but very effective way of communicating some information to me when I look at it at the other end. And then finally, the actual formal submission of itself, um, which includes ordering extra copies. Um, you still can order bound copies through ProQuest. Again, we'll come on to that section. I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. Uh, pay your money, pay the fees, and then actually submit. Um, so coming back to our first page here, the instructions, um, you'll see various elements of the text is highlighted. You can click on that. It'll go to more information, instructions, and um, uh, helpful hints. Um, it tells you what you're going to need before you start. It tells you the sort of thing you need to have thought about before you start. It tells you what it's going to cost. Um, $65 for dissertation, $55 for thesis. Uh, I think that's down from like $90 for a dissertation that, that was previously charged. Uh, if you select Open Access Publishing, which we do encourage you to do, um, with ProQuest, that's an extra $95. Please note that's extra on top. Um, but traditional publishing uh, is the main one which the standard fee covers. Uh, you'll also be asked about copyright registration. We'll come on to that. It's a little bit difficult to um, talk about here. When we come to publishing options, you'll see that there are two main uh, options available to you. Uh, one which is called traditional pu publishing, the other one is called open access. I think traditional publishing, the best way to describe that to you is to think of it in terms of literally publishing a book. Um, previously, what would appear on ProQuest website would be an abstract and possibly uh, the first few pages of your dissertation. If anyone wanted more information, they would have to either subscribe or purchase uh, that material with that purchase would come a royalty fee payable to you as the author. Under open access though, the main difference there is that um, basically you're wanting to give the broadest possible dissemination of your scholarly research. Uh, it'll be available in full on the internet to anybody who has access to the internet basically. Uh, so under that option you will not receive royalties. Having said that, um, Basically, I think um, I remember seeing some statistics once that basically you're lucky if your book gets accessed, if, under traditional publishing, you're lucky if your material gets accessed by anyone apart from your mother, your grandmother, and your children um, pretty frequently. Uh, that, that, that's pretty far and few between. Uh, but you do need to consider that before you, um, before you do select. Let me tell you this real quickly. Um, when you submit to ProQuest, uh, ProQuest will deliver a copy, an electronic copy of that dissertation or thesis to UA libraries um, for us to store in our digital storage system. And on that system, uh, you are required to give open access um, through UA libraries. So anyone who can sign on to UA libraries can see it for free, uh, no royalties. So I, I, I would suggest to you that the best thing to do is to select traditional publishing here on the ProQuest website. There's no extra cost involved. I know how you guys are budget tight at, when you get to this stage in your career. Um, so you may want to select traditional, no extra cost, and then just go with open access through UA libraries. That gives you the best, best of all options. At the bottom here it's talking about um, restrictions, embargoes. You'll, you'll hear the term and you'll see down here that the options that we give to you, if I click on the restrictions button and then click on delay, delay release it'll show these up. Um, 
faculty and the graduate council here decided that, that we were going to give you three options, a six-month embargo, a one-year, or a two-year. Basically what that means is um, it is formally withheld, it's not published for that amount of time as specified in the embargo, but thereafter it gets released um, open access or traditional publishing based on what you've selected. Um, again, that is between you and your committee and any other interested party who perhaps is funding or has funded your research. Uh, I know we have in the past where some research has been on, done on ceramic internal combustion engines, for example, that the motor company involved did not want that research going out onto the internet for obvious reasons until they had um, created a patent, registered a patent, and everything was up and running to protect it for them. Um, but we do discourage you from placing an embargo as much as possible. Um, really have good valid reasons for doing that. And finally, uh, it talks here about um, third-party search engines finding your work easily or not. Um, that's talking about Yahoo, Google, and that good stuff, and um, whether or not um, uh, you want that to to be able to access your material, you have the option to, to select that. So I, here I'm going to select traditional publishing with a delayed release of a six-month embargo, no third-party search engine access, but we're not going to restrict that, and I'm going to save and continue. And you'll see over here that the publishing option is now checked in. We're now down to the publishing agreement itself. Please do have a read through it. It's, it's not like a lot of deal documents which go on for 33 pages. It's not that at all. It's actually pretty good. Um, and is there anything in, you, in there that you don't understand, you can go click to these guides or go back to the um, resources and guidelines. Uh, click there and you have some more information about... Um, uh, whatever whatever you had. Uh, so let's go back to the publishing agreement. Okay, once you've read through that you're going to accept or decline. Now if you decline you can't proceed with submitting your thesis and dissertation but if there is anything in there that you have a problem with do please ask ProsQuest or give us a call at the graduate school. Moving on to the all-important page, the contact information. This is very important, especially an email address, please. Please do use an email address that you're going to be able to access. Do please do not give us an email address and then disappear out of the country and not have access to that email address. That's very critical in case we have any revisions or questions. Uh, we need to be able to contact you quickly. Uh, mailing address, email address, phone number current address and if you know where you are going to be in the future with effect from a certain date again th this is not something that we're going to be uh, giving out widely to anybody this is purely between you ProQuest and ourselves and it's to help you in case we need to contact you for some information and I am need going to need to put something in here I think otherwise it won't take it current address uh, And because like everybody on campus, I live for my work and I live in my office. So, future is the same. I'm going to save and continue. Okay, that's the first section completed. Now we're going to coming to the all important bit about the actual dissertation itself. We're going to put in here the the title, and I know this is not what you're supposed to do but I'm just an giving an example. The year that um, it was completed, come down here, the year the degree awarded. Now this is the, obviously, this can be different. You can submit your dissertation or thesis at a different time from when you actually graduate. Obviously there are other academic requirements, I'm afraid, that you have to complete before you can graduate. The thesis dissertation is but one part of it. Um, the great thing here, though, is we we obviously take as much advantage as we can of drop-down menus. A, so, so don't, you don't screw up, and B, so it's nice and quick and nice and easy. So I'm going to get my MBA, and I'm going to get it from... Which department am I getting it, getting it from? Business Administration, just to be difficult. My advisor's first name is David. His last name is Franco. It pays to have friends in high places. Um, 
John Schmidt is going to be one of my committee members, and then the other associate dean, Dr. Natalie Adams, will be my other one. I've got a small committee, nice and easy, but it's an odd number, so we can always get a majority. Down here, um, th you may think, well, what's the importance of this? But it is, because again, as I said at the beginning, the metadata that, that this provides uh, makes research from other people uh, much easier trying to find your piece of material. Uh, much, much easier if you can pick the right one. Business administration, accounting, I'm an accountant. And if you want any other categories, you can do keywords up to six. Um, you're the only one who's going to know what are the best ones to put in here, but uh, I was at a conference, the ETD conference, the other week, and one of the things that everyone was complaining about was that some students seem to either take poetic license when they get to this step or they forget completely what they were actually doing. Some students look at this in terms of well, what audience am I trying to get to. Please don't do that. What is important here is that you give keywords about the content, about the material itself. Um, there are lots of little programs, virtual robots that are running on these ETD systems that other people put there trying to find information about their area of research and this is a great way for them to find it. The abstract section here, you can just do a copy and paste from the abstract from your own paper itself. It's much easier and then you know that, that you obviously put your thought into creating it in the first place. So you know it's going to be right. Save and continue. And this is the next one. We're, we're going to actually then convert our, our dissertation, upload it. And as you can see, before you start, there is a warning. Um, PDF is pretty straightforward apart from you've got to make sure that if you're uploading from software like Microsoft Word in particular, that the fonts are embedded in the PDF. Otherwise, it, it's going to come out looking gobbledygook and really screwy. Uh, and it's not going to help anybody at all. Your scholarly research will stay with you. It won't be disseminated. Um, and there are instructions on how to do that again when you actually convert. Um, another great thing with the PDF conversion tool that you can see up here, if I click on this just quickly, uh, and it talks about creating a PDF. And what you can do here, wonderful thing, is upload the file that you want press the convert button and what it actually physically does is it sends it to ProQuest they actually do the conversion for you and they actually check it so I think on the test that we've done so far 15 minutes was the longest time it took to come back um, I think the, the we did one where we thought I oh, know we'll go and we'll upload it at 2 o'clock in the morning and see what happens uh, obviously a machine is doing most of the work but somebody is still physically checking it it came back 15-20 uh, minutes later, so that was the that was the um, the only time that we've had that testing. Here we are. We're uh, on our submission page for the actual PDF itself, um, and I am going to choose a file to actually load up. And here we go. It's a PDF file, PDF file that we've already created, and if I click on Save and Continue. Uh, there we go, it's now added that file. Um, we've moved on to the next step, which is the supplemental files. Let me just go back and show you what it's uploaded. It's now created the document and put it in there. If we actually go and look at it, this is a user guide, but there you go, isn't that good? Okay, so um, save and continue. Okay, we've already got the PDF, so we're going to go to Supplemental Files. Okay, this is the thing I mentioned to you earlier, which gives you a wonderful opportunity to add some extra files. Um, it does list some sort of common media types. Um, spreadsheet, look, uh, video, uh, data, code, even, audio. Um, you can add that in here. <coughs> They've got two two file options, oh, sorry, two opportunities to, to load listed. You can actually add many more. I'm not aware that there is a file size limit. Um, but it says up here, if any, over, anything over 10 meg, it, should, it says zip them before you actually add them. But again, give them a call if you start having problems. Um, again, we're all feeling our way with things like this to start with. So um, 
Uh, please have patience if you reach that point where you have lots of supplemental files, big files that you wish to upload and it's not working. Give Co ProQuest a call, contact them or give me a call and then we can we can see if we can help you. And we're going to save and continue. And, uh, and as I said right at the beginning again, this is an opportunity for you to write me a love letter as you're going through. Um, it won't make any difference to whether you graduate or not. Um, I, I do have a say-so in the sign-off of your thesis or dissertation submission, but um, <laughs> I'm not powerful enough or loved enough back in the graduate school to have the, the power to actually stop anything. So uh, bribery and corruption won't do you any good at this stage. Um, um, but uh, I have seen some notes coming through in terms of um, students asking for uh, extra embargoes and that sort of thing. That That's not what this should be used for. Please uh, talk to me separately, independently about that if you need. We're going to save and continue and move to the final section. Um, copyright. Uh, let, me, let me briefly explain to you how copyright works. Um, and I'm sure most of you do know. There, there are links on our on our website, on Graduate School's website, to copyright information. There are links here in the resources and guidelines to copyright information. There's a lot of legalese in there. But basically, as soon as you and UA publishes your thesis or dissertation, it is automatically protected in full by international copyright law. Um, you do not need to do anything more at that stage. You are protected by law and <clears throat> all of the good things that that benefits that that brings to you. Uh, in theory, no, nobody should be able to plagiarize you, nobody should be able to steal your ideas. Having said that, it does happen. Um, in my personal experience, I think I've come across it once. So uh, it, it, the, the possibility of it happening, the incidence is pretty remote. If you do end up in that situation though, and you do need to sue somebody through the courts, registering your copyright is a good idea. It puts it on public record through the Library of Congress. Uh, there is an extra fee involved, I'm afraid, another $65. But what this does give you is that if you do need to sue somebody, you automatically have the upper hand because your copyright is registered before you go to court. The court therefore automatically recognizes your entitlement. You don't have to go through the preliminary stages of proving your entitlement to that copyright. Um, and then at the other end of the process, when, you're, when you are successful in that suit, um, the register, having registered your copyright already means that you are guaranteed certain minimum damages and um, retribution. So um, $65, it, it, it is or is not a good idea. Uh, so far, 50% of our students have taken it up. Um, again, I will tell you this, much as I love ProQuest, uh, you can do that yourself, direct with the Library of Con Congress once your material is published. And I'm not sure how much they charge, but I think it may be cheaper. Um, but go if you go to the Library of Con Congress website, you can get more information about that specifically. So, um, no copyright's not been filed previously on this particular material, and I'm not going to pay the extra $65 because I'm a tight Brit. Uh, we're going to save and continue, move to the next step. Um, although we are doing away with paper, doing away with ink, doing away with printing, this is the only window that the world has on your work, and I know that Auntie Mabel would love to have a hardcover copy with your name on the outside of this piece of work because she loves you dearly and she would like to have something to show for all the money that she has pumped into your long, hard graduate career. This is your opportunity to pay her back where you can order um, either hardcover, softcover or microfiche. Remember microfiche? Um, I don't, I'm too young, but hey, never mind. Um, the opportunities here, are, if you look pretty carefully, it's, it's an 8x11 or a 6x9 sized copy under each. The 8x11 is the old book size that we used to use that you'll see on our library shelves. Um, it's pretty expensive. It's $53 per single copy, up to two copies. Um, the smaller version, which is like a pocket pocket book, uh, is a little bit less. The soft cover 
is a little bit less still for the 8x11. You can get a pocket size soft cover, even cheaper, $32. Um, I will do the selling point at this stage, though. Tuscaloosa Bindery downtown here in Tuscaloosa on 6th Street, who used to do all our binding, offers a wonderful service, and it's even cheaper. So um, if you don't want to avail yourselves of these services um, and you want extra copies, go down there, please. Um, some departments will ask you to purchase a copy for their departmental library. Some committees will want a copy, uh, and I'm afraid uh, that is between you and your committee, and uh, you will need to work that one out. But here's an opportunity to purchase some extra ones. Um, I'm not going to order at the moment, because as I said earlier, I'm a tight accountant, and I'm going to write a copy if you need one. Um, we're getting to the nitty-gritty now. This is your chance to go back and change anything. Uh, it, it does ask you to, to go back and review the important elements, uh, especially the publishing arrangements. I mean, once once you've selected, it's not necessarily cast in stone. You can't change it at some future point. It is pretty difficult. That's the only thing. Okay. Uh, so we're going to continue with our submission, having verified that everything is okay. Uh, I'm submitting a thesis, so it, under traditional publishing options, so it's telling me here that, that it's going to cost me $55. I'm going to pay online with the credit card, so I'll click the button here, and I will go in and give all my wonderful information. Um, and then I get to the important bit here, which is the submission. As you can see, it won't let me submit without paying. But once I hit that button, that is it. It's gone to ProQuest. Um, it's not physically published at that point. What will happen is it will come to me in the graduate school. That is when we'll conduct our review and email you to tell you um, that either some corrections are required and to tell you what they are, or that we are rejecting it, that it needs to be proofread because we're finding lots of errors, uh, or there is some small minor thing which just needs to be changed. You'll get an email back from me with instructions on how to do that. It's very straightforward. Uh, basically, the PDF document you will need to pull to take down, make the changes in your original document on the original software, and create a new PDF file to upload and go back to that section and upload it. One one important resource that I would like to show you is if you go back to the home page here, click on this button here which talks about uh, about ETD Administrator. There's a great little thing here, try our demo site, Stu test student submission. You can actually go through to this area, uh, it's a demo site, we're going to test sub student submission. It actually looks just like the real thing, but you're not doing any damage to the graduate school's <laughs> website, or to ProQuest for that matter, or to, and you, you've not uploaded anything, you're not creating any damage to that. Uh, it, it enables you to create multiple sign-ons, to create multiple documents, to go and try and break it, you know, have a go at doing it, uh, and it's great. I would thoroughly recommend you to um, to use that as many times as possible. I think we say on our website as well to practice, practice, practice. Um, that's the best thing to do um, as many times as possible before you come submit the real thing. A couple of last-minute things to mention. Uh, it is web-based, so anything, uh, any machine that you have which is powerful enough to support these browsers and this software um, and as long as you have your original manuscript with you on its original software and you can convert it to a PDF file then you can do this from virtually anywhere that you have access to the internet which is pretty neat. You can do it 24-7 so that means when um, we publish our submission deadlines for thesis and dissertation submission. That means you can physically submit up to midnight on the date of the deadline submission. Now that is, let me just stress very quickly, uh, that is midnight central time. That is not midnight Pacific or midnight Eastern, uh, midnight Eastern in particular because you're already ahead of the game. We had one poor student who complained bitterly that uh, I did not make that clear and therefore when he was in New York and he came to submit and it was five minutes to midnight, in fact it wasn't, it was five minutes to, to one or two o'clock in the morning. So um, please keep, please be careful of that. And it's not the time that you start the submission, it is the time that you actually press the submit button at the end. That has to be before midnight on the last deadline day. Okay, just to make that clear. 
Uh, let me just show you this very quickly as well, support and training. Um, basically, um, there are support tools, administrator's guide, creating PDFs, we've talked about that already. There's the usual frequently asked questions list. Um, remember that there's no such thing as a stupid question. The stupid question is just the one that's never asked. Please don't assume that somebody has thought of it before you. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to contact them direct via email, for you to contact ProQuest direct via email. Uh, with a particular question that you can't find an answer to. They are very, very helpful. They get back to you very quickly. Um, we had one gentleman who decided that he was uh, going to submit from Germany where he was on vacation. Uh, the software on the machine that he had was not exactly... Um, uh, let me say there was a communication problem, not just because it was in German, but there was a communication problem, but they resolved that fairly quickly and the student was able to uh, thereafter e easily upload his material. But if you have anything that comes up that you can't find the answer to, email them through this little portal here and, and you should get an answer pretty quickly. Um, the resources and the guidelines we mentioned, mainly, to, mainly about the <coughs> legalese associated with publishing and copyright. You, you get to look at the actual agreement you're going to uh, be asked to sign anyway before you get to us. Um, submitting your thesis dissertation uh, again, these are the options that we looked at, viewing, reviewing, submitting, and there's a whole lot of information about each the administrator itself with these test websites that, that, that I mentioned, which are a great way for you to get some practice with. Um, a couple of other things to mention, that this isn't the end of the story. Once you submit online with ProQuest, uh, there are still two very important forms that you need to submit separately on paper still. It's only two forms, nice and easy. Um, the signature page in the thesis or dissertation is no longer part of the submitted manuscript. Um, we decided that for security issues we did not want original signatures being uploaded to the internet uh, with the wonderful printers and copy and paste functionality that we have nowadays it would be all too easy and tempting for someone to replicate someone's signature and use it um, without that person knowing so um, the signature page is not part of the document it's replaced by a form called committee acceptance form for electronic theses and dissertations it's a there is a form a copy of the form on our website that's linked from our ETD web pages uh, Basically, uh, it, it looks the same and your committee members need to in enter their names and sign next to their names that they approve the document. But it just highlights a couple of the responsibilities that you and your committee have always had but were never as explicit under the old system. So it just draws your attention to things like you guys are responsible for proofing and reviewing the document before it gets to us. We do not take responsibility for that. If we do find some major errors, we will reject the document, and you will obviously need to get it re-rechecked before you resubmit. The second form is um, recognizing the new forming, the new form of the publishing arrangements. Here, there is a three-party agreement, basically, or there are three parties to two agreements. There is an agreement between you, the author, and ProQuest, because they are actually handling the, the publishing end of it. There is an agreement between you and them. That's the one that we've looked at and you will sign as you go through the submission process. But there is a second agreement between you and us as the publishing institution, uh, the institution that is granting your degree. Uh, uh, and, and more importantly within that, the library, UA library. So again, there is a separate form which you can download linked to our website which is a publishing agreement. It's only a one-page document, very straightforward, and again is, not, is, an, is the form where you would record any embargoes that you would want placed on your material. So please go and download that form, fill in the, the sections that you're required to fill, sign it, and then both those forms need to be sent independently into me at the graduate school. We will not complete the approval and review process until those two forms are received. Uh, and if I have not got them, if you think I have received them and I have not got them, I will be emailing you to say that I have received, we've received your ETD submission but are still missing one or both of those forms. And then also just to mention that communication will be primarily through email. 
when you sub set up your account you will get an email from ProQuest asking you to follow a link and confirm. When you submit your thesis or dissertation you will get an automatic email to that email address that you have declared from ProQuest confirming that they have received your submission but that's not the end of the story. Uh, I will then receive an email at the same time telling me that the dissertation has been placed on the back of the chair or, or wherever, wherever. You will get an email confirming that you have submitted the dissertation or thesis from ProQuest and then you will get e uh, one of the next emails will then come from me and it will either say congratulations it has been accepted you have completed that part of your degree requirements or it will say um, there are minor revisions and those revisions will be listed or if it needs complete proofread I will indicate that to you as well uh, it's nothing it's not really very strenuous at all but an important part of the uh, process and those emails will be going automatically to that email address that you specified okay